lateral and the Caldwell, so I'm probably going to shoot through those uh, positions real quick. What will be introduced to you guys today will be the waters, the modified waters, and also I haven't looked at that on my on this slide, but I think we're also covering reefs today. Okay, so the difference between uh, what happens to the movement of the peaches ridges and the, uh, the the pyramids in the different positions, you will see here that the Petrus uh, pyramids run across the orbit in a zero degree. And whereas for the waters, now what we're trying to do here is for the waters, we're trying to evaluate for air and fluid levels and also for blow-up fractures that may occur with the, the floor of the orbit. So this would require a tilt of the head to draw the pyramids and the ridges below the maxillary sinuses. Okay. <coughs> So again, this is just a comparison of a uh, of a uh, uh, straight PA, all not perfectly fluid to the uh, image receptor, no angulation of the X-ray tube. So the pyramids lie right across the, the orbit, whereas here, with the uh, chin up, with again zero degree angulation of X-ray tube, it's not going to be projected below the maxillary sinuses. Okay. Okay. We talked about this earlier when doing facial bones and also sinuses. We prefer to do it in the upright position, but again, you need to assess assess your patient's condition for them to do that. We would like to give, do it in an upright position so we can evaluate for air and fluid levels. Um, However, if you have a trauma patient, the best way to do this would be in a lying down position. The only thing here again is that you, not, you may not be able to see the air fluid levels as fast as you can with an upright. So the lateral facial bones, lateral facial bones. You guys already, we've already covered lateral skull, right? So the lateral skull, where's your central rate directed? Two inches above the EAM. Two inches above the EAM, okay. So for facial bones, Okay, position stays the same. The interpupillary line is going to be perpendicular with the image receptor. The mid-sagittal plane is going to be parallel with the image receptor. So this is how we control rotation and tilt. So the only difference between the skull, the skull is two inches above the EAM. For facial bones, it's going to be directed right at the zy zygoma, or the prominence, the, the, the part that sticks out the most on your cheek. Okay. Any questions here? Same thing. Not the changes. Structure is best seen as superimposed, super, uh, uh, superimposed facial bones, including the mandible. Are we concerned with the skull? Okay. So if you cut off the cranium during the facial bones, that's okay because this is facial bones, not the entire skull. So that is acceptable. Okay. All right, so to find the zygoma, it's gonna be midway between the EAM and the outer campus of the eye. That'll take you right at the prominence of the zygoma. Okie dokie. Okay. All right, let's keep on going. I don't know why this is set this way. I'm just talking to myself this morning. Okay, so uh, the central ray is directed right at the zygomatic bone. Uh, optimal exposure factor, we don't need a lot of high KV, so medium KV is about 70 to 80 KV. Uh, you, before we take the x-rays, you want to make sure that any type of artifact can be removed. Body piercings, uh, hair ornaments, <laughs> hair ornaments, uh, anything, anything metallic, anything that is opaque that may show up on the radiograph, you want them to remove it. Okay. Uh, no tilt is assessed by the orbital roofs. They are superimposed. Uh, no rotation is assessed by the angle of the mandible. The gonion are superimposed. The greater wings of the sphenoid are also superimposed. Okay. Now you're not going to get. In most cases, you're not going to get one structure. They may be slightly off a little bit because we're, we're dealing with two things. First, we're dealing with the divergent beam, okay? That divergent beam is gonna throw anatomy left and right and up and down, 
Okay. The other thing too is magnification. So we're three dimensional. So though the parts that are further away from the image receptor is going to get magnified. So you are you may see some double lines, but you want to try to get those lines as 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 one as possible. But you still may see the double lines. Okay. So those are the challenges that we had. Our lab, our lab on Monday, man, we we struggled because we kept seeing double lines. We were seeing double gonions, double sphenoid, double orbital rams, and we kept having to position those phantoms every which way just to make sure we got that superimposition. We finally just said, "What? Screw it." <laughs> exactly. So I'll just take what you got. Okay. All right. Any questions here? See what happened here. So. The cranium is cut off. It's okay. Because we're more, more focused on the face, the facial bones. That's what we want. All right. The parietal acanthial, the parietal acanthial view. Okay. This is also known as the waters. <coughs> well, this is, is this going to be easy to do on the table? No. Okay, probably not, especially if they've gotten into a car accident or they fell down a, a set of a stairs. You don't want to do that. So you want to try to do it in an upright position as best as possible. Again, assess your patient situation. So in performing a parietal a can't feel, uh, view or the waters, new baseline here is your MML. What does MML stand for? Mental Mental line. Mental line. So it's going to be chin. The chin is going to be on the surface of the image receptor or the table or the wall bucky, but the chin is going to be pressed up against the, uh, the board okay, or the table. Um, the other thing you want to make sure is there is no rotation of the head. So now your mid sagittal plane has to be perpendicular with the image receptor. All right. Central ray is going to be directed uh, the back of the head to exit the acanthion. Where is the acanthion? Okay, so it's right below the way everybody did that. So right below the nose, okay? Exit the acanthion. When we do this MML, you're uh, trying to achieve this 37 degree angulation. And when you do this, what happens to the petrous portion or the pyramids? So what's going to happen to that? Where is it going to lie? Here's the mass, here's the maxillary sinuses, so it's going to lie where? It's going to be below that. Again, the whole purpose of this waters is we're trying to look at the orbits and we're also looking at the maxillary sinuses. If the pictures pyramids are across the, uh, the sinuses, we can't see fluid levels. So we want to try to get it as low as possible. Okay? Questions here? So the petrous ridges is going to be below the maxillary sinuses. No rotation, optimal exposure factors. So, to, so we want to make sure that these are free and clear. To assess uh, any type of rotation, we're looking at the outer margins to the edges of the skull with no rotation. And how do we know if this is done PA or AP? Do we know that by now? By looking at the eyes? By looking at the eyes. So look at the distance between the lateral margin and the edge. Is this AP or PA? PA. PA. If it was AP, That'd be this short. margin would be close to the edge of the, the skull. Okay. So again, this particular view is good for ruling out, RO stands for ruling out, Good for ruling out with forts and also tripod fracture and also foreign body to the eyes. Okay. Okie dokie. All right. I threw a couple of pictures on here just so you guys know what the left forts and you guys already know what a tripod fracture is, right? So that is a fracture of the zygoma separating from the three processes, right? So that's your tripod. Over here is the lay forts, or lay forts, or whatever. Okay, so lay forts is a horizontal fracture across the maxilla, and they have a they have different degrees of of uh, fractures. Generally, again, it's a horizontal fracture that just um, that is just part of the maxilla. But if it's more sever, uh, if it's more severe, it does include the other bones. Okay, 
So this is type two, and then type three is the entire facial area with a horizontal fracture that goes all the way across. Okay. But basically what Leifert's is, is a horizontal fracture involving the maxilla. Okay? The definition's in your book. I just wanted to put a picture up there so you guys understood what it was. Okie dokes? Okay. Okie dokes, okay. K. Caldwell. We've seen this already, right? Does it change? Central ray, PA. Mm -hmm. What are we trying to get perpendicular with the image receptor? OML. OML, the, the uh, orbital medial line is perpendicular with the image receptor. In a PA projection, we're going to do a 15 degree angulation downward. Does it stay the same? Yeah. Yeah. It stays the same. We're done. Okay. It's the same thing as the skull, except for facial bones. Okay. Petrus ridges are going to be projected into the lower thirds of the orbits. No rotation, optimal exposure factors using uh, medium KV of 70 to 80. The Christigalli is going to be equidistant to the outer margins. Where's the Christigalli? The flame. The flame? The little flame. Okay, Christigalli. Equidistant to the outer. Midlateral orbital rim, equidistant to the outer margin, and superior orbital fissures are symmetrical. All right. Um, a pure PA. Yeah. Again, it's PA, right? Because we're looking at the outer margin. Look at the great distance from here to here. Where are the orbital fissures at? Right here. All right, any questions? Modified waters. Okay, in the waters, we did the chin. The chin was on the image receptor, forming, uh, we were using the mental meal line. For the modified, it's not as extensive, so what we're using here is the lips. Okay, so now we're going to use the lips meal line uh, and putting that perpendicular with the image receptor. And this forms a 55 degree <laughs> angulation. 55 degree angulation. The center ray is going to exit the acanthion. What was it for the, the waters? Where did that exit? The acanthion. The same. Yeah. Okay, it's the same. Okay. Now, now you guys are understanding this. There's a lot of views, but they're all almost the same. Slight modification, but they're pretty much the same. So instead of the chin, we're using the lips. Central ray exits the acanthion. This is ideal projection to demonstrate possible orbital fractures and foreign bodies in the eye. Okay, so some of these fractures includes the blowout fracture. I should put Cypress tattoo right here. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys don't have this picture. I just put this up here again just to show you what a blowout fracture is. So the blowout fracture again is fracture of the floor. Okay, the inferior rectus muscle goes underneath. Okay, through the through the brain, it gets stuck there and it causes diploma. Diploma. It <laughs> <laughs> cause dip. <laughs> Diplopia. 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 Double vision. Diplopia. Diplopia. Okay. Diplopia or double vision. All right. So the modified waters. Very good in looking at the core of the orbits. But look what happens to the petrus, petrus ridges. Where are they sitting? Like on the maxillary. They're sitting in the lower. Yeah, they're sitting in the lower half of the maxillary sinuses. So is this good for evaluating the maxillary sinuses? No, no you can't do this. Because if there are fluid levels here, you can't see it. And this is why this is only good for looking at the floor of the orbits. We're not looking at the maxillary sinuses on this one. Oops. She's good. She saved it. <laughs> Still good, still good. Nasal bones. Okay, we have the lateral, we have the parietal acanthial, which is the waters, and then we have the PA axial. All the same views, right? Okay, lateral. 
the interpupillary line is going to be perpendicular with the image receptor, and again, your mid-sagittal plane is going to be parallel as well with the image receptor. Such ray is going to be centered to one half inch inferior, one half inch inferior to the nasion. So where's your nasion? Okay, so top of your bridge. Okay, so we're just going to go half an inch below so like that. The, so pretty much the interpupillary line. <laughs> Oh. Okay, yeah. here's your knees down right here, so half an inch below that okay. to enter the knees. IOML. Yeah. IOML. 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 Okay, let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you call it that. Okay, let's call it the IOML, yeah? I'm having a touch. Oh. It is. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. okay. So not everybody's confused. Let's just say half an inch below the knees. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, but for you to visualize it, yeah, IOML. But I'm not going to write that on the test. Okay, when we're doing nasal bones, we generally do it bilaterally, okay? You do two, you do two laterals, okay? Is this a right lateral or left lateral? Left. Yeah. Left lateral, so which nasal bone are we looking at? Right. 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 Yes. This is closest to the IR, okay, yeah. So are we, do we agree this is a left no, lateral? Left lateral, okay. So that left side is closest to the image receptor. We do that, we flip them on the other side, and we do a right. Okay? For the left, right? In the olden yeah. days, <laughs> in the olden days, which was probably just uh, last, uh, last year, before digital, we performed this on an extremity film, an extremity cassette. You guys remember your speeds? Mm -hmm. No. What? Slow yeah, let's speed just forget speed. about it. <laughs> uh, okay. So we use slow speed for extremities because the slower the speed of the intensifying screen, what happens to your detail? It gets better. It gets better. Remember we had two different, we had very speeds of screens. But the exposure is higher, right? Yeah. All right. All right. Nasal bones. Colony to the area of interest. No more than that. The nasal bones are very small. All right. So here's the nasion, half an inch below the nasion, makes you right in the middle of that bone. Okay, uh, low KVP. I guess we don't care about this, right? Apparently not. Okay. The low KVP. Low KVP, collimation is important, okay? So although we're not uh, using different speeds, collimation is important because it is a small bone. Not only is it small, but it's also very thin. Okay, so collimate. Collimate, collimate, collimate. Okay, dogs? Mm -hmm. So we do it bilaterally. One left, one right and we do a comparison. Questions? Okay, so here is one with a fracture of the bone. Don't know which one it is. No skull. This right here? Yeah, right there. Where are the arrows at? Right here? No. That's a fracture right here. That's a fracture. What hole? Down. Right there. Yeah, that's a big nose. She said it's a big nose hole. Oh, it's a big nose hole. Two fingers. You guys are getting obnoxious now. Gross. <laughs> All right, so two, two projections, okay? One left, one right, okay? Let's keep on going. What's wrong with this image? It's a nasal bone, right? Why, why do we have the, the maxilla in here? Why do we even have the lower teeth in here? It's like an ink block test. <laughs> <laughs> what do you see? I know, it's like the site that's psychology. Um, <laughs> ink block. Ink block. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what is that pointing to? Oh, the anterior nasal thing. Okay, the anterior nasal spine, and what bone does that belong to? The maxilla. The maxilla, okay. Okay, that's it, nasal bones. Okay, let's do the optic foramina. Optic foramina. So uh, we kind of introduced the Reese uh, view. We already know the waters. We already know the Caldwell, right? We already know the modified waters. Okay. So for the parietal orbital or the Reese method, AML. Okay, the AML. What's the A? What's the A? Cantillon. The cantillon line from here to there. Okay, the imaginary line. 
is going to be uh, perpendicular to the image receptor. We're going to rotate the head approximately 37 degrees. Okay, how do we know 37 degrees? And based on what? The knee. So we do our very best to do that, okay? Uh, central ray is going to be uh, perpendicular to the downside orbit, so in a PA projection, we're looking at the side down. So the side of interest is going to be closest to the image receptor, and again, these aren't easy to do, especially if there is facial injury. So now we're going to flip them on their side, do the same rotation, but which side of interest is it, is it now? if they were on their back doing an AP. It's what? Side up. The side up. It's gonna be the side up. So we're gonna rotate it to the affected side, okay? Out the unaffected side, but we're looking at the side up. Okay, also bilateral projections are taken for comparison. It depends on your facility, okay? Just like everything else, it depends on your facility. And it also depends on what you're collimating. Some facilities only call, have you collimate to just the side of interest. Others have you open it up to include both orbits. All right, this is an upright recent method. Who's in 252? Radio bio, radio bio. <laughs> this, doesn't this guy remind you of the guy who sits up front? There's, an, uh, there's a guy there that sits with a baseball cap all the time. Yeah, the older guy. On the side? Yeah, on the side, towards the wall. The long hair? Not the long hair. The one that sits, the one that sits behind him. Yeah, he wears shorts all the time. Yeah. He reminds me of that guy. Yeah. All right. So we would prefer to do it this way. So again, the Campo Mieta line okay, is used. Turn the head approximately 37 degrees. Chin, nose, cheek. Chin, nose, cheek. Column into the area of interest. And so again, what we want is the optic foramen in the lower outer quadrant. That's what I was trying to say earlier, and I couldn't say it. Out, uh, lower outer quadrant. So if you <coughs> look at this, okay, it's in the lower outer quadrant. It's where we want the optic foramen to sit. Anywhere else, it's not a good position. Okay, and you have to end up doing it again. All right. So in this case here, what they did was they did include both orbits. So you have the side of interest, and then this also helps us visualize the lateral margin of the opposite orbit. <coughs> see the lateral margin? Mm -hmm. So it helps us see the, the outer lateral margin of the opposite orbit. All right, so going back over here. The optic foramen is located in the lower outer quadrant in a properly positioned piece, close collimation, right? Decrease scatter radiation, give us a better image with optical exposure factors. I don't know what your book tells you, but when we're doing the optic foramen, we're doing anywhere between uh, in the low 70s. I don't know what your book tells you. But it's, 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 uh, medium, it's from low to medium KV. For digital, for digital, okay, so it's a little bit more for digital. Okay. We're done. Yeah.